I think that this is a very good play. People should see it. I, I, I may tell some of my friends it's, it's really awesome. Shows like Wiesenthal and men like Wiesenthal are essential to our society to root out evil and to show that justice will be served in the long run. I really think the um, play described on how he just wanted these people to be um, brought to justice. The people who are actually involved in the Holocaust are in their 80s and their 90s. Who will speak for them when they can no longer speak for themselves? And I thought it was amazing the work he had done to bring these people to justice that had committed these heinous crimes. We like to do these talkbacks after each performance because so many people have these questions and uh, I can answer them once and everyone gets the answer. And people seem to really want to uh, talk about the show. This is a fat suit that I had made to make me look about 50 pounds heavier. Now I'm not bald, I have a full head of hair, but in order to play the character, I shave it. When I, uh, I uh, started reading about Mises Ball and his rejection of collective guilt, I connected the two, and I thought this is just this is a story I think that uh, that I, I'd be real interested in telling. Although it makes I make a very compelling piece of theater, it also makes me feel good after I'm done, and I see people stay to talk about it. It just I feel like I'm I'm doing a good thing. So that's really why. That's really why. Um, do you know what they did with the note? They did write a note. And then there were two other notes in my research that I, I found out about and I read. So what I did was I did a composite of all three notes into one note and gave it to Albert, who really did exist and this really happened to him. Uh, but his words I mixed with other, other uh, victims and created that note. So there's not just one note that, uh, that Albert wrote. Yeah. Anyone else? Back there, yeah. I just wanted to find out the day after uh, this by uh, uh, Wiesenthal in uh, Israel. Uh, Wiesenthal lived all of his life in uh, Austria, and then when he died, both Sila and he were buried in Israel. And there are so many people that I know would love to see it. Is there a chance that you're bringing this elsewhere? This is a, I've been touring with this show for uh, five years. And this production that you see here is our springboard to go to New York City. Question is, in all your research, what have you learned from the children of the people who were found? You mean from the criminals? From the criminals, criminals yeah, from their children. If they had known any inkling of any of that in your research. Uh, as far as I know, the only, uh, the only uh, uh, child of a criminal or you know, ancestor of a criminal that I've met, as far as I know, has been Eichmann's uh, great granddaughter. Uh, but uh, there are, uh, and it, there's an interesting concept that was just introduced to me recently. Everybody's heard about that, um, the find, the art find of $1.5 billion of stolen art from the Nazi treasure trove, of stolen art. This man had all of this art that did not belong to him. And he's kept it all his life while these survivors were, were struggling to pay their, their, their uh, the medical bills, struggling to feed themselves and living on welfare because they had been robbed blind. And this man held on to all of that wealth. And what did he do? When he died, he passed it on to his son. Who knew where all of that wealth belonged? And what did he do? He kept it. He kept it to himself. So what is this man? but a second generation Holocaust perpetrator. Now he is on trial. I think it's fascinating that it's such a large, a huge crime that the echoes still continue. It's fascinating, thanks for that question. Why hate just because that this person is different from you because they don't probably share the same religion or they don't share the same interests? Do you have any bullies in your school? 
Yeah, a bunch of bullies. Well, this is the way that all bullies work. Okay, a bully feels bad about himself. He maybe he's got a bad home life, maybe his father hits him or whatever, and he's very angry. And he wants to take it out on somebody. So what he does is he finds somebody who looks, maybe looks weak in the class. And he goes to somebody else and says, uh, hey, Johnny dresses funny, doesn't he? The kid might say, well, I don't know. Hey, Johnny dresses funny, doesn't he? And they go, yeah, yeah, Johnny dresses funny. Okay, all right, good, come with me. All of a sudden, he's got a gang. And he goes to the next one. We think Johnny dresses funny. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are these kids? They're afraid that they're going to get picked on. So all of a sudden, they become the gang. And all of a sudden, this guy starts to feel more valuable. The bully has power. Because back home, he gets beaten up. And he's got a very unhappy life. So all of a sudden, they pick a, what they call a scapegoat, or just some victim. It doesn't matter if he's Jewish. It doesn't matter if he's black. It doesn't matter. People like this, people bullies, they're just going to find somebody weak, and they're going to get a gang by intimidation just so that they can feel powerful. And when you spoke, I'd like for you to speak to them specifically a little bit more about the <coughs> idea of this collective guilt. Collective guilt. Collective guilt means, well, if your father committed a crime, then I'm going to blame you for it. And I'm going to beat you up because your father committed a crime. That's the way society was for thousands of years. The family shame. And if that guy, if your great-grandfather would ever committed the crime, then you're guilty. What sense does that make? You know? And so the, the idea of the rejection of collective guilt is a very sober, very logical way. I mean, if, if your brother does something, should you get punched in the eye because of it? No, right? Would you like it if your sister did something and then you got kicked in the shins because of it? No, no. Well, that's, that's the very simple uh, definition of what the rejection of collective guilt. I think Mr. Dugan did a good job bringing an honest opinion and verification of his life. We should never, never forget. He wanted the world to heal from this tragic event, and he didn't want anybody else, like, he didn't want any of these bad people still out there. As a Jew, this is such an ingrained, the Holocaust is such an ingrained part of our personality, and we know so much about it that it is amazing to hear the innocent questions of young people. I thought he gave a very different look because I hadn't learned about a lot of things that he talked about in school. And I commend you most highly for bringing this forth. Thank you.